दवस तिहाक में अनलिमिटेड नेटफ्लिक्स बालन अनलिमिटेड डेटा पैक के काक मूल्य पावल टबे अनलिमिटेड फन ने का कारगन आदम में एक्टिव करगन लेंगा तुम में वैटी करगन लाओजी रुपया पन हटा दूँगा मामे एन अब इतने का बोम Tonight, threat of new variant. Two returnees from the UK among the latest COVID-19 infections. Making matters worse, politicians urge to keep utterances to a minimum on the cremation of COVID-19 dead by the GMOA. Reopened for business. First tourists arrive in Sri Lanka after nine months. Step up. The Army Commander and the Defence Secretary promoted to the rank of General. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine this Monday, the 28th of December, 2020. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Nava Sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Malsuandin. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanayake. Now let's start with the local stories. At long last, the first flight carrying tourists to Sri Lanka in the new normal arrived in the island today via the Matala Rajpaksha International Airport to much of the elation of the tourism sector. The country's tourism was dealt with a double blow in the form of Easter Sunday attacks of last year and the COVID-19 pandemic this year. The pilot project worked off to accommodate tourist arrivals involves a bio-bubble ensuring that none of the arrivals will come into contact with any person outside the predetermined process. Now this is the first tourist flight to arrive in Sri Lanka for nine months. Sri Lanka was among the best choices of the world's most renowned travel magazines and its national carrier was also among the top airlines to fly in the eyes of the magazine's readers as well as travellers. Sri Lanka attracted nearly 2 million tourists in 2019 from over 190 countries, with a large proportion of tourists arriving from India, the United Kingdom, China, Germany and France. Revenue earned from the tourist industry in 2019 was 3.6 billion US dollars, which is 4.3% of the country's GDP. The island's airways, however, were closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which in turn hit the tourism industry hard. However, nine months later, Sri Lanka opened its skies for business with the arrival of a flight from Ukraine carrying a batch of tourists at the Matala Rajapaksa International Airport today. The group included 185 foreigners who arrived in a Sky Up Boeing 737 from the Ukraine capital, Kyiv. After arrival, they were accommodated at adjoining hotels in Beruala, Bentota and Kogala as per health and safety guidelines. Though there had been some opposition in certain quarters to opening up Sri Lankan borders for tourists at this time, the Government Medical Officers Association is of a different stance, saying the country had to be opened at some stage if the stricken tourism sector is to be saved. Yeah, bubble system make him at me. Jai Bubulak with the Rata Mai Sanchara Karmanti Aram Bakaran and Yemita Venet or Anita get in Nativ and Ratata Tina Awadana Omakaragana Tamay Direta Anu Sakaran. It would meta a pit of Kawadhari Karan and Amko me Sanchara Karmanti a pit of Tivicha Pradana Ada Marga. Yeah, the Marga Himikaragana Pit Ratak with the Risarati and Nabe. Sanchara Kyo Pawa appear at the inni appear at again Viswasati not Covid Dapi Martha Nikola, Covid Pal Nikola Tibu. In Sabi Memo the Janata Gasarima, Baladar in Gana Harati in Tirna Haraha, Anaga the निरोधायन त्याग नुद्रे दी मारकम करनो मै संचार के नंतर पीसीआर परीक्षण सिद्ध करें तो रागत संचार का स्थान वाले टप पमनक गमन की रीमटा आवश्यक पहुंचकर सेलेसी मटा मै आवास तार दिए नियमित व्यापृत्य सकास चलाती है ना
Safeguard Hand Sanitizer Navatama Nishpadana Pella Nero Ki Matti Vekata Lanka Fe Palam Varata Handun Vaadena Mali Pan Veggie Cracker Crunchy Veggie now, the Government Medical Officers Association offered words of reassurance today and uh, uh, praised the measures that will praise the measures taken by the health authorities to curb the spread of the virus. They said that the country's ability to reduce the strain placed on the health system by having a higher number of daily COVID-19 recoveries in comparison to daily infections is a reflection of the strength of the health system of the health authorities. Now, the GMO also points out that Sri Lanka's COVID-19 recovery rate if, is far superior to that of other countries across the world. That said, 366 fresh infections were confirmed from the island today, which include two Sri Lankan returnees from the UK, where a more transmissible virus strain is making rounds. The country's overall COVID-19 death toll rose to 191 yesterday, following the death of four persons over the age of 50. The cause of death of all the victims was stated as COVID pneumonia, with two out of the four persons also reported to have suffered from a brain infection and a heart attack in addition to COVID pneumonia. The youngest victim out of them was a 52-year-old woman. In the meantime, 674 COVID-19 infections were confirmed from the island yesterday. 174 of them were reported from the Colombo district, while the Gampa district confirmed 153 cases. In addition to this, 110 cases were identified from Kaluthara, 52 from Kandy and 50 from Ratnapura. The remaining 134 infections were confirmed from 13 other districts, while six Sri Lankan returnees were also diagnosed with the virus. Two returnees from the United Kingdom where a new variation of COVID-19 is confirmed to be in circulation are also among them. Basnaire Palatin Pitatata Yana I Sambandin Sidukarnu Labana Rapid Antigen Parikshane Taudrata Sidukarnu Labano Evage Mema Parikshane Arambakale Pasugi the Heart of Venida the Heart of Venida Sita Medakwa Kale Tula Pudgalin Atada Sai Siak Paman Rapid Antigen Parikshan Sada Yomukar Latino Ye Dinet Pudgalin Edas Ekasiak Pamana Mesada Sahabai Karonu Labua Ye Dinedi Pudgalin Pasdenek Rapid Antigen Parikshavin Anaturua Covid Asaditin Bout Handunagata, Eanua, Medakwa, Kaletula, Handunaganati, Mulu Asadita in Sankyava, Pana Saturday Quino, Taudrota may antigen pariksha, Basnahir Palate, Pitavana Starnavis Dukanulabano, may Pudgalin, Pana Saturdena, Gesami Pashti to a hatiator, Desi Asua Kanuraginatino, E Desi Asu Dinat, Nirodaina, Kriavalis and the Hayomukar Latino. Meanwhile, with five hundred persons successfully recovering from the virus, the island's overall number of recoveries rose to thirty three thousand two hundred and 21. The country's total active COVID-19 cases rose by 366 new COVID-19 infections today, placing the figure at 8,008. Sweelabuka, <laughs> Sahalukarami, Idriata Gamankara and Apita Pulwanka Labilatana Eka Vishesh Tatya, Sagani Marni Ampramana Kwarta, Unat, Sapek Sheva, Adu Marana Nupatia, Potagani and Pulwangi Latino, Arana Dukaragan, Suela Bu Prashati, Davasagani, Vadikaragan, Ape Vishesh and Rohal Padatia, and then Darita, Missia, that is at Karik Kulatian and the Mira Rakagan, Barak, no one with the Gamankirim Sada, Meda Kwapi, Yam, Samat Kamak Dakulatino, Ekape Vishesh, Mape Sauke Karaman Lesaha, Ape Padatiti and Shaktima, Babi with the Hadakuna, Pradana Sade Yakuno, Sandanagar, Pokura, Ida Sula Vitra. Pokurata, Ekotuna, Rogin, Desia, Quitter Pramania, Eanu, then Tunda, Satasi, Panasatra, Quitter Veno, Bandanaga, Pokure, Namut Apita, Saturda, Karneta, my making Anti Bahutre, Suela, Valatino, Mavenapota. Meanwhile, the Government Medical Officers Association also requests politicians to refrain from commenting on the country's stance to cremate its COVID 19 dead in search of political mileage, as it simply perpetuates the issue, leading to unnecessary friction within the country. From the word go, the Sri Lankan government's decision to cremate the remains of all COVID-19 victims met with opposition, especially from the Muslim community. The government deemed that the island's water table is too high and burials of COVID-19 diseased will pose a risk in the virus spread if the virus contaminates the underground water. 
with a hike in the number of fatalities since the beginning of October. Calls for burials to take place concerning COVID-19 dead, depending on the respective religious faiths, were amplified. In recent days, there had been pockets of protests in the country against the mandatory cremation of the remains of those perishing from the coronavirus. Today, several Muslim and Christian organizations in Jaffna staged a protest. In contrast, however, several organizations of the Buddhist clergy protested in front of the presidential secretariat this morning, demanding that the bodies of those who die of COVID-19 be cremated and not be buried. Meanwhile, the United National Party issued a letter to the members of the clergy from the three sects and to His Eminence the Cardinal, saying that it is the right of all communities to decide whether to cremate or bury their dead. The UNP is of the view that the government should consult with Buddhist, Hindu, Catholic and Muslim religious leaders before taking a decision in a special situation. In the meantime, the chief epidemiologist of the Epidemiology Unit says that a committee has been appointed to look into whether the burial of COVID-19 deceased could become an alternative to cremation. At the beginning of the COVID-19 epidemic in our country, the safest method of dispersal of human remains after COVID-19 infection uh, was identified as cremation and it, it is the safest method that is available for the disposal of human remains infected with COVID-19. So there is a very big uh, demand or request from the people of the country that burial should be allowed. So because of that, on request of the Honourable Minister, Secretary of Health Ministry has appointed a committee of experts consisting of virologists and microbiologists to revisit this situation, to gather the evidence from the other world, part of the world and provide expert opinion whether burial can be used as an alternative method of disposal of human remains with COVID-19 infection. This committee is working on that now. We expect their report will be handed over to the Secretary of Health very soon. With that, we will be able to decide whether burial can be given as an alternative method of disposal of human remains to cremation. Meanwhile, editor of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Haritha Aludge, urged politicians to steer clear from making remarks regarding the methodology in which COVID-19 deceased are handled. Vivida Pudgula, Vivida Vidya Tavila, Madhya Haraha, Yam Yam Prakash Nikut Kirim Haratha, my Prashne Vyakul Velatin. Deshapala, you know, Tamangi Deshapala Matima Tantra, no Tamangi Deshapala, Goda Vadikara Ganimusanda, Maker and Prakash Haraha, Rate, Memo Hotedi, Visandi, Yutu Prashnea, Digin Digger of Digasi Maharaha, Anawash Gatunkari Tatama Ratul Nirmani Viminti, Deshapala, you Puluantara, me Prashno in Beharavin, no, Tokotama, after Puluang. In a attack with it on the Tanakatina, in Satawa, Prama, the Nokara, may we say Kamito Tamanga, our son, Tirne Prakasha Patkuliti, Ehara Tava Kaliko, then a Yam Yam, Nosansu Tatuilatino, a Yam Yam Gatalukari Tatian, Mahajana Tava, we ship the Bavia Katilatina, Etati, Durukara Minkati to Kuliti, Eva Game, appreciation made the Parsha, Mata Idipatkan, the Patra Makiani, Memotirate, Niti, Niroda, Niti, in the part of Hala, Ada, Hani, Vitrakil, Goshenik, Neko, Bumudani, Onakil, Goshenikiri, may Prashna visit in Sadisha Parakian to see you the Natakino, may Taksha. Mate at a Garukala, may Takshani come to Avasantir Nakadinum in Prakash Patkran, eighteen at a Garukaran, eighteen Tanu, Rape, Rate Idris Salasum, Sakaskaran, Kini, Lima Pidripatkan. In the meantime, Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Ghebreyesus, stresses that this will not be the last pandemic in the world and that the world must invest in preparedness capacities in coping with pandemics like this. Delivering an online speech to mark the first ever International Day of pandemic preparedness, the WHO chief mentioned that COVID-19 has messed up the world and the world should learn from the lessons with preparedness. Any efforts to improve human health are doomed unless they address the critical interface between humans and animals and the existential threat of climate change that's making our Earth less habitable. History tells us that this will not be the last pandemic and epidemics are a fact of life. But with investments in public health, supported by an all of government, all of society, one health approach, we can ensure that our children and their children inherit a safer, more resilient and more sustainable world. We will see you soon right after this break. Stay with us. Salem Bank, 
the bank with a heart welcome back you're watching first at night now president gotabi rajpaksha has instructed to completely ban the use of maize to manufacture ethanol and alcohol in the country the president's media division said that the head of state instructed the commissioner general of excise to issue a gazette notification imposing the ban the president had also instructed the subject state minister and relevant officials to intervene to stop irregularities in the purchase of crops from farmers including turmeric and maize he had emphasized that local farmers have successfully expanded the cultivation of turmeric and maize and that the next season's harvest is nearing the president had stressed that farmers should also get a fair price adding that the government should fully intervene to stop irregularities in the stockpiling of traders the president has ordered to destroy the turmeric stocks illegally imported for errant traders as well the president's media division said that the director general of uh, customs and the inspector general of police have been instructed to strictly enforce the law against businessmen responsible for the irregularities Now, Commander of the Sri Lanka Army Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva has been promoted to the rank of General by President Kotabi Rajpaksha. Now, he has served as the uh, co Commander of the Sri Lanka Army since August 2019 and is also the Chief of Defence Staff as appointed in early 2020. Presently, he is also serving as the Head of the National Operations Centre for Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak. Meanwhile, Secretary to the Ministry of Defence, Major General Kamal Gunaratna, has too been promoted to the rank of General. General Kamal Gunaratna also acts as Secretary to the Ministry of Internal Security, Home Affairs and Disaster Management. Meanwhile, former Chairman of Lanka, Satosa and CWE, Nushat Pereira, has been appointed as the Chairman of the Sri Lanka Standards Institution. The marketing professional was appointed as chairman of Lanka Satose in January this year. On Saturday, Nushad Pereira announced that he stepped down as the chairman of Cooperative Wholesale Establishment, citing a busy schedule and refuted reports that he was removed. Meanwhile, Rear Admiral Anand Piris was appointed as the new chairman of Lanka Satose, while uh, Venura Gunnar Vardana was appointed as the chairman of the Cooperative Wholesale Establishment. A suspect was shot dead by police this morning while attempting to escape from custody. The suspect had attempted to snatch a firearm from a police officer during the incident and had been shot in the head by the relevant officer. The police said that the deceased was a drug racketeer. The incident had occurred at around 3.25 this morning in the area of Halgampitiya in Veyangoda. Officers of the Western Province North Crime Division arrested the suspect on the 23rd from the area of Maligatana in Veyangoda for attempted murder. The arrest was made on suspicion of severing the arms and legs off of a person who is said to have tipped the police off about a cannabis racket. The police said that the victim is presently receiving treatment at the Colombo National Hospital and that the suspect too is a cannabis racketeer. During interrogations of the suspect, information pertaining to the stashed away weapons had come to light. With that being the case, the police had accompanied the suspect to a wooded area in Udugama Veyangoda early this morning and found two hidden swords. Police added that two hand grenades, a detonator, a gelignite stick and five grams of narcotics were found from the area of Halgampitiya in Veyangoda. On the way back, however, the suspect had attempted to strangle the driver of the vehicle with the handcuffs, during which the vehicle had veered off-road. According to the police, the suspect had then attempted to snatch the firearm of another police officer. However, the relevant police officer had shot the suspect and gotten out of the vehicle. The suspect too had then disembarked from the vehicle and had wrestled with the police officer. During the tussle, a shot fired by the police officer had caused injuries to the suspect's head. The police say that the suspect had already been dead when he was admitted to hospital. The deceased is a 37-year-old and is identified as Yodhape Dige Nishanta Kumarasiri, alias Babanvatte Nishanta. He is said to be a cannabis racketeer from the area of Babanvatte in Veyangoda. There are several cases presently being heard before court against the deceased suspect and his father too is a criminal known by the name Boston Mahatun. 
Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadas, assures that the opposition will fight in the parliament on behalf of the people, especially in getting the government to follow through on the promises made on election propaganda platforms. His words came during a visit to Kataragami yesterday. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, visited the area of Vallimatagama in Kataragama yesterday. The residents of the area put forth their grievances to the opposition leader. Sajid Premadas, Porta Katakan from the doctor. In Medana, the Janata again, Prashna Kava in the Mehima, meet a pera Katakam Rohala, Disa Rohala Pera the Tibuni. Sama Disa Rohala. Make a Grammy Rohala water, Adukar Lenani. Nan, make a Disa Rohala, Pradesh Rohala, take a Mikai. Upakar and Hingia came with you. He took a multiple monitor, a Kaiti and Mama Doctor Baragan Nang, Api me Dahanapati Yuki with an examan the Karagana, Kataragam Rohala to Mama Labadin Nang, multi para monitors Paha. The opposition leader then addressed the gathering. Then Ratuni then a given Lotevala, me Raja Porunduna, we do believe at Karanoikia, Mativer Navedi Kave, Kiwe, we do believe a Kapa do Karanoikia, me Covid Nisa, Maha Parapatala, Arthic Arbu that Nirmana Vilatibino. It is a Janata Vilun Karano, Sahana Kramate Maker. Give her in it, our stout in the day. Esekia did Rajet Berinang Eker, Yahapat Pratichar at Dakwan. Api, Parliament to Tula, Samakami, Prajatan Travadi, Satana Karanoamai. We will see you shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is First at Nine. Now, Sri Lanka stocks closed 0.29% higher today. Colombo's all share price index gained at 0.29% to close at 6,704.89. The main index started positive but fell to a daily low at 6,699.74. The SP SL20 index of more liquid stocks, meanwhile, gained at 20.09 points to close at 2,619.76. The market turnover was 1.3 billion rupees with 125 stocks gaining and 66 falling. Now the US dollar buying rate ended at 186 rupees and 70 cents today while the selling rate settled at 192 rupees and 10 cents. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Health officials of South Korea say that measures will be taken to speed up vaccination programs in the country after it confirmed the more virulent COVID-19 virus variant present in the UK within the country today. Meanwhile, India began a COVID-19 vaccination trial in four states. A two-day COVID-19 vaccination dry run began in India today in four states. Krishna district in India's southern Andhra Pradesh state conducted the first test run in the country with senior district and state officials witnessing the process. Three other states in Punjab, Assam and Gujarat also participated in the dry run. According to international media, India is likely to approve Oxford's AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine for emergency use by this week after its local manufacturer submitted additional data sought by authorities. Meanwhile, former head of the US Food and Drug Administration 
says that a new variant of COVID-19 first detected in the United Kingdom could already be in circulation in the United States unnoticed and in a reasonable number at this point. Speaking to media, he said that the lack of systematic genome sequencing tests in the country is behind the failure to identify the existence of virus mutation. According to the former FDA chief, as most tests were done in private labs, the US is lacking a consolidated database at the federal level to effectively and systematically track virus mutations. In South Korea, in the meantime, officials are vowing to speed up efforts to launch a public coronavirus vaccination program after detecting its first cases of the virus variant linked to the rapid rise of infections in Britain. South Korea will extend a ban on direct flights from Britain for another week until the 7th of January and will require any passengers arriving from that country or South Africa to undergo testing before departure. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.